two and a half decades. Uh, these companies, uh, electronic firms and electrical companies, have moved production over these last decades uh, to low-wage havens around the world, including China. Uh, and if it's in fact that lowering wages and benefits to the lowest possible level is is what is meant by creating a competitive advantage, uh, we may want to consider passing on the so-called benefits of the FTA. Uh, another question, by competitive advantage, do we mean that the U.S. auto companies would somehow be advantaged in competition with Korean, Japanese, and other auto companies? Question. If so, uh, why are Ford and Chrysler opposing uh, the Chorus FTA? and General Motors remaining neutral. I, I see that our, I'm not sure that anyone from GM is here. I, yeah, okay. Uh, well, I'll, I'll leave it up to you uh, to explain that position, uh, but I suspect that it has something to do with the fact uh, that General Motors owns uh, Daewoo Motors and is in fact operating quite competitively even against Hyundai in producing cars in Korea. In fact, uh, if you look at their comp the competitiveness of General Motors and Ford and Chrysler, uh, they, are, they are quite competitive uh, in producing and selling cars in Europe, in Russia, in Latin America, uh, and elsewhere around the world. What is it about Korea, which has the lowest auto import penetration ratio of any auto producing country in the world that makes it so difficult to produce uh, for autos made elsewhere, not only in the United States, but elsewhere around the world, uh, to be exported there and sold. Would the Chorus FTA make it any easier to overcome these obstacles and competitive disadvantages? Uh, the UAW has its doubts. But now let me turn specifically to the notion, uh, or to Professor Nam's paper, and his particular use of the notion of competitive advantage. He provides, as he mentioned in his presentation, uh, a definition of revealed comparative advantage. He plugs in the global trade figures into uh, this defined ratio. Uh, which essentially is he calculates uh, Korea's exports of autos to the U.S. divided by Korea's exports of autos to the rest of the world, all divided by uh, uh, Korea's export to the U.S. in aggregate divided by the Korea's aggregate export uh, uh, to the rest of the world. And he, uh, in the case of autos, and sectorally decides that if that uh, ratio is greater than one, a country, in this case Korea, has a competitive advantage in producing that commodity. Standard definition of, uh, of comparative advantage. But uh, beyond the numbers and beyond the symbols, this is just a mathematical way of saying that the relative market conditions are such that, the, that more cars in Korea are exported and sold to the U.S. than all other products made in Korea and sold in the U.S. This is hardly surprising considering the fact that 80% of our current trade deficit with Korea is in automobile products. But what does this definitional notion of comparative advantage really mean? What, is, what can it tell us? Uh, if one defines A divided by B equals C and C equals comparative advantage, and then you plug in the, the uh, numbers that he has provided, one can largely calculate the numerical value of C, comparative advantage. And this is precisely what Professor Dam does in his paper. No more, no less. He acknowledges in the paper uh, that, he, that this does not provide, and I quote, an empirical statistical model, but a mathematical calculation model that is heavily dependent upon some parameters, for example, the elasticity of substitution between domestic goods and imports, which is difficult to estim estimate and is assumed. Um, in other words, the findings and the figures 
are nothing other than uh, what has been assumed a priori. You get what you assume to get. Uh, you get what you assume these parameters of this model are. Historical evidence of our trade with Korea in general and in auto uh, suggests to us anyway that the elasticity of substitution between Korean autos and imported autos uh, for Korean consumers is extremely low. <coughs> I think the problem here, as Professor Nam did acknowledge, is uh, that he's unable, uh, as was the ITC analysis of the Chorus FTA, to deal adequately uh, with non-tariff barriers. Uh, the issue of non-tariff barriers is barely addressed in the paper uh, and is barely addressed uh, in much of the public uh, debate over the Chorus FTA. If uh, Professor Nam, in fairness, uh, deals with the of what I guess he referred to as the changing perception of Korean consumers to purchase auto, uh, imported automobiles. Uh, uh, certainly the cultural and historical uh, preference for Korean made vehicles versus U.S. vehicles uh, is important and I would hope that it would change. Uh, uh, however, uh, uh, the non-tariff barrier issue uh, again, from the perspective of the UAW, has not been adequately addressed uh, in this Taurus FTA. But uh, back to uh, the to the paper, having demonstrated demonstrated in quotation marks that Korea has a competitive advantage in auto production, we are left the readers uh, to conclude that. Free trade, the free trade regime that leads to Korea to producing, let's say, all cars in, in Korea and the U.S. workers uh, producing, uh, uh, let's say, iPods um, uh, must be a good thing. Uh, generate a huge and growing auto trade deficit with Korea, that's a good thing. Lower working class living standards and wages in both countries, that's a good thing. <laughs> Make it easier for global auto producers, both Korean and American, uh, to move produ production to China where wages are low and labor rights non-existent, fantastic. In the conclusion of the paper, Professor Nam writes, and I quote again, the emerging Chinese and Indian market will not only will be not only an opportunity but also a threat. Cooperation based on complementarity between Korea and the U.S. will maximize the opportunity but minimize uh, the threat. Uh, we respectively uh, disagree uh, with the relative importance uh, of uh, what I think, uh, Dan, you referred to as the sandwich uh, effect of Korea being uh, uh, squeezed between Japan and uh, China. Uh, I think the scariest part, at least for us, uh, of that, that earlier presentation was the fact that currently, pre-Chorus FTA, Korean manufacturers have 24,000 subcontractors and suppliers in China already. That is precisely, by the way, why the Korean metal workers, the, the, the Korean unions and labor uh, in Korea uh, oppose the agreement, because what this agreement will do will increase the ability of Honda and perhaps General Motors Daewoo to move more production out of Korea to China, import it back into Korea as an increased value of the value of the automobile, and then turn around and export it to the United States duty free. So what the true uh, import substitution is, we're substituting cars made in China for cars made in Korea, and that will be the effect of the free trade agreement. And speaking of elasticity of substitution, uh, I did not see uh, the issue of income elasticity 
uh, of substitution mentioned in this paper either. In other words, uh, if you say the theory of competitive advantage would lead us to believe that we want uh, uh, those nations that have a 